So hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. And I'm joined by Alan today, all the way in not so sunny Aberdeen. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to have to think of another way to, <laughs> to start these things and not refer to the weather. Uh, <laughs> or just lie, maybe. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Alan, I, I came across you first via your student's video on mental health. And, and I have to say, when I, when I first saw that it was a student creation, um, ah, and this is being recorded as well. But anyway, um, I, I don't always have the highest level of expectations of what I'm about to see. I, I, I apologize to absolutely everyone and my ex-students that I'm offending terribly. Um, but <laughs> I, have, I have to say, like this, I, I was blown away. I mean, I, I thought it was so good that I had to reach out and talk to you and find out more about the work that you've been doing with your students. So without further ado, over to you, Alan. Okay, well... Um... Basically, during the, the pandemic, um, and I think everybody in all of the colleges probably, you know, had the same, the same issue that a lot of people were struggling, including lecturers with mental health. And like at the college at Nesco anyway, I don't think we've, certainly in my class anyway, or classes, we've never seen so many people um, who were struggling, you know, and sometimes it was just smaller things as well. But there was obviously, obviously people who already had issues, it was, you know, made worse. Uh, by what happened obviously or what's happening uh, so what was interesting is you know as I was you know getting emails from students and as an academic tutor you're trying to help them and put them to the right resources you actually realized that there was a lot of resources provided at NESCO and even though we have like you know videos about where they are and we talked to them in the first week about you know what's available it's a, it's a huge amount of information to take in on top of everything else so actually, a lot of the help that was there um, and students just either didn't know about it or hadn't engaged with, you know, the way we presented it. So the, we have a, a unit each year in 3D computer animation course where basically they, they work as a team. And it's the one unit a year that they actually work as a team. And it's actually near, quite near the end of the, of, it's, of course, right at the end of the, the first year. So these are actually first year students, the, the work that you, 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 you saw on, on the online. And um, I wrote the brief this year uh, thinking, how can we get these students to use the power of animation to, to help other students engage? Uh, so, yeah, so basically I wrote the brief and in the brief I've said, you know, there's a lot of information at the college uh, for helping with uh, mental health. And we also have teams and things like that. So the brief was basically to get them to or help to students to understand how to access you know the, the, the things that are there to help them um, and obviously the power of um, power of animation is that you can tell a story and you can help people engage if you can make that story something that you know st fellow students will engage with and who better obviously than students to do that and then so you know they, they were set out basically this this remit and it, I also asked them to use the Nesco branding as well so when you see the video, hopefully you'll notice that we've used like a lot of the, the, the branding and colors that are used already at Nesco. So it, I think that helped probably make it look more professional. Uh, and I got the students to research the college um, branding. I got them to research, you know, the mental health uh, help that was available. And then I also got them to research uh, other animations about mental Ill health because there actually is some really interesting ones. Some of them are quite old that, that they found, but there is some really interesting ones. Uh, so they, they also researched, you know, and some of them are produced by charities, some of them by governments, all that sort of stuff, you know, or, you know, departments and stuff uh, in the living governments, uh, the health side of things. So there, anyway, there was lots of stuff. And we just, you know, a lot of them didn't even realise, you know, the help that was out there until the brief was set. And then obviously the idea I said to them was that, you know, you never know, you might help, help someone who's in a really bad place right now and you know so it's actually a really important thing we're doing so I think they all took it really seriously when it kind of the gravity of it kind of kind of hit them and they and they all like worked incredibly hard as teams as well uh, and then the team dynamic as well I suppose the other great thing is that you can pull out people's skills because some students are better technically and some people you know some of the students sorry, are better um, with the sketching and the drawing side of things and coming up with the creative elements so getting them together I think that also helped probably produce you know some really interesting videos. So I, th I think it's it's probably good to start with perhaps showing the video. 
Sure. It's worth the wait. That's what, that's all I'm saying. It builds, <laughs> it, it builds the excitement. Here we go. Share sound. <laughs> this is what we went over. <laughs> Hopefully you can all hear that. It's been a time like no other. And you may be left feeling anxious, depressed, or even lonely. If you are suffering mentally, we want you to know that you are not alone. The college can help you. If you have any worries, college related or personal, talk them out with your tutor first. You can also speak to the student advice team. You can arrange mental health support like counselling sessions or peer support to help with emotional, college or family issues. You can also check our website, which has links to local mental health charities in Aberdeenshire and national support services in the UK. Help and support is always at hand because mental health matters at Nesco. It's it it's like a short piece, but it is, I mean, it looks professional. It's put together really, really well. Yeah, it's it I think the that this team in particular, because there was other teams, and but this team is the one that I think like most of all like grasped the whole aspect of like sharing the information and not not giving people too much at once. Like some of the teams works would have like a lot of text involved. Well, they very much told the story and it felt, didn't it, of a student's perspective. And I think that's what, what really makes it work well is the student side of things. Because if it's even the handheld device, like most of our students are always on those. And, and I guess all of us are, to be fair. And like they haven't, they have a MyNesco app that has all of the information and stuff. So, you know, for doing lots of like, not just all of the mental health side, but, you know, just, they can almost, you know, anything they really need is all on that app. So it's also encouraging them to, to use that. And then you've got the charities that it mentions within Aberdeen. And uh, the, the, the students were, were brilliant because of like the, the, st the student who um, storyboarded it was fantastic. He did an incredible job. And then the rest of the team got together and they really sort of pulled the vision out. And, uh, and, and they didn't overcomplicate it. A lot of my students, when they initially do uh, 3D computer animation, they want to do a realistic character. But I try and always tell them to stop because if you can actually convey a lot more from a character that isn't realistic. Then in, in, in a very short space of time, you can tell a story with a character that isn't too realistic. Because, you know, what I mean, if you've got a realistic character, you need more of a backstory, you need more information. But you could, you know, what I mean, when you simplify things, you can actually make things much easier to understand. So I think that's that I think they've distilled and done a really good job with that. And uh, the other great thing is like they they got I think they got a friend to do that voiceover, and it, the voice is fantastic. Isn't it? <laughs> the voiceover was really what you think it was a professional, wouldn't you? So I I do. So we we had a previous virtual bridge session from a filmmaker, um, John Gill, who, who, who produced a series of videos to help help um, education staff sort of pr produce their own um, clips, and one of the the things that he pointed out was that audio matters audio really matters but that voiceover is really good it's really calming it's a, a nice pace nice mm -hmm. tone it's it's really well done what, what i wanted to ask was how did you prepare your students to to tackle this particular topic like you you mentioned mental health is an important issue um there's a a message that needs to go out to students and they need to know that help is available but just talking about mental health is, is a very sensitive subject. How do you broach it? You know, how did you prepare your students to prepare that message for their peers? I think it's something that we speak of. It, it, as an academic tutor, we, you know, we've actually spoken to them for like, the, like at this point, it, almost the whole year, I've, you know, I mean, I've had academic shooting time where I've spoken to them about and people who have needed help have come to me. And uh, it's a subject as well that I think that their generation is a lot, a lot more open to speaking about than we are, which is 
probably a healthy thing as well <laughs> but you know i mean I, it wasn't a difficult subject at all and the fact is i guess we also presented it in in a way that you're also you know it's not just them it's they're helping other people so i think that made a big difference is that you know they're talking they're talking to you know they're ta they're talking to their friends in class but they're also helping people that they don't know and you know who might be going through something that they're going through but you know i mean we're not presenting it that it wasn't personalized to that degree so I think hopefully it was it was it helped them just like doing that research a lot of them said there's so much help out there they didn't realize that there was and and so yeah it, it was a really it seemed to be a really positive experience and uh I, I guess in the 3d course as well like in what we teach like we we teach a creative process of you know sketching sorry um researching ideas doing like mood boards researching ideas and then like doing mind maps, sketching, uh, sketching the, the idea out. And it's, it's a whole process to try and help them explore their, and usually it's their own ideas, but quite often like a lot of our briefs are really open and they can bring like things that are important to them. Like they have a character animation where they have to interact with, uh, with like a, you know, an, an object or a, in a, in a, you know, another, another, we have a, like a organic character and non-organic character. But what happens in the animation is totally up to them. So they can tell their own story. And, you know, I mean, quite often students, like like I've had a student in the past, he had during, um, must have been a couple of years after 2012 when the Paralympics was such a, you know, such a, a big thing. And, uh, and, you know, it really was highlighted in, in you know, the nation's sort of, you know, psyche. And, uh, and one of the students did like a, a basketball player for his character, like a, a wheelchair basketball player, because he thought the movement was actually really interesting and how you could throw the ball and all of that. And, uh, and also like just the way they moved around the court. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, what I mean, you, students can bring into our course sort of the things that are going on around them and what they think is important. And uh, like in second year, they can do a character, they do a, there's like a, a character brief for their graded unit. And uh, we, the, the, the brief for that is that they bring to life a character from a book that hasn't been visualized before. So it could be even like, a, you know, like quite often in books, you get like, there's, a, there's a, like a character that isn't the main character that you absolutely love. And it's a book that hasn't been made into a film yet or something like that. So they absolutely love that, you know what I mean? And quite often you'll get a student who just like runs with that and you get this incredible character. So... so how, how I started this was I'd, I'd said I'd had fairly low expectations um, of, of what I see as student work sometimes presented, which is completely wrong, really, because, you know, for all the years that I've taught, my, my, my students have always exceeded my expectations. So you'd think I would know better by now. Um, <laughs> how, how do you feel about this idea of co-creation? Because clearly, I mean, clearly when, when the college saw this and they used it as part of their promotion and marketing, it, it certainly suddenly opens the doors where you, <laughs> and you know, I can imagine having talked with other lecturers who work in creative industries, you know, yeah. other people start knocking on your door saying, hey, I've seen that. <laughs> can you make me this? Yeah, yeah <laughs> and, no, I, and, we, we and, do and get that. <laughs> how, how do you deal with that? And do you think students should be more active in terms of what they produce and how they work with the college? Well, yeah, you know what? I always think the main problem is having the time for students to work with, you know like with other like like co-work with other areas in the college because of like my manager Tony Young is like he's incredible when it comes to like trying to bring things together and bring teams together because it like he's also runs the drama part of uh, the college so quite often he'll say like oh if you need a voiceover someone from that department can do it but it's always the time because of when you're teaching the units it always feels like you're almost like in a you know it's always like a lot of time pressure for the students to get things done in time and quite often you then lose the chance so but we try and encourage it as much as possible and like that unit in particular and we're actually i think we're changing the the unit where, the, where they're working within a team that actually makes it a little bit looser so that the students can do more exploration and stuff like that so it's something we want to encourage more of because it, especially within 3D, you're very much focused on what you're creating. So, and, and because if they, you know, you're creating your own project, it, you don't often get like the time to, to work together as much as, you know, we'd like them to. It'd be nicer sometimes, I think, if we could have bigger projects, you know I mean, where students like, for instance, like you could have a unit that takes like half the year where everybody works on a film. 
and they all have to create characters and they all have to come up with ideas for the storyline and stuff, you know, I, something I like that. It's just the time involves the problem there. That's, that's that part, part of the ambition of the, the HN Next Generation program, where, where they build a lot more around the project. And it, just in terms of that teamwork, so some of this occurred during the lockdown and pandemic, et cetera. How did you find that students worked remotely incredible. together? It was incredible. Absolutely. That was amazing. And you know what? I forgot to mention as well, like that was made in four weeks, it's like no time at all. That whole, like from concept to, to the finished render was wow. all like done in four weeks. So they did an amazing job. So yeah, so, and they worked online, as you said, and I don't know like about you guys, but I, I grew up in like the MSN, messenger generation <laughs> where, that's because you're so you, young yeah <laughs> where you'd be doing your college work you know what i mean whilst like t- typing away to your mates and you know people in your class or whatever so they so at their level they all use something called discord and i, I don't know if you guys are all familiar with discord or not it's very much for the gaming side of things but it's now branching out anyway so they all they all pretty much communicated via discord and they did have uh, video meetings as well, obviously, and they did. Re- they had to do recorded meetings as part of the unit. Uh, but the main thing is they were literally in contact almost all the time. And when they went into these groups, they could keep up with each other on where they're at. And if someone was struggling, they all came in and helped. And like some teams were more effective. It's actually a really good unit because if people like realize when they work in a team, like who's pulling their weight or not and things like that. So they actually have to manage each, like each other as well, which is another aspect. So that's a great part of that unit is the fact that they have to work together because they actually learn about like, you know, do are for instance, if they had something in late for me, it doesn't feel nearly as bad as if you're working as part of a team for a, you know, a joint unit. So it, they like after this unit as well, they improve, you know, a huge amount just in general. So can I ask, like, going forward, like, we we always know that employers value those kind of soft skills, such as such as teamwork. Um, that and and it's at the heart of elements like meta skills that are coming through for the future. So how how would you say that your experiences are going to impact on how you deliver this unit in the future? Like, how do you ensure that if if everyone's coming back to campus, for example, yes. um, you know, and, and that might be one future that we, we see. How are you going to maintain that ability to to work remotely together as a team? Because employers are going to be looking for that going forward. Yeah. And especially, I imagine, in, in your industry where potentially Absolutely. you can work at a distance. Yeah, no, it's, it's really interesting, actually. Um because if we, we did encourage it before the pandemic, so it isn't new. Students did tend to use Facebook, actually, Messenger and things like that when, uh, when I first started. Because I've been, I think I've been at the college seven years now. So when I first started, it was all MS, like, sorry, um, Facebook Messenger. Most of the teams were using. And even like, I think at that stage, maybe Tumblr, which you don't hear so much about these days. So they were doing things like that and they were recording like their messages as well. So that they could, you know, to evidence that they were working as a team. And uh, so they used to use that and that used to be the main one. So they come to college, they'd have, they'd have like a face-to-face meeting at college. And then they, then they, they, when they went home, they'd message and keep up with each other on what they were doing. And they used to, I think you still also be able to send large files, which you can't do now, I think with Facebook messenger, which is a bit of a pain. So they used to find it really easy for sending files to each other, but that's all like gotten, like it's all works better. Cause they've now got, for instance, the college now has one drive so they can all access not only like there used to be an issue and this will only affect you if you use 3ds max or something like that or 3d packages but basically so you have your file with your you know your scene in it but all your materials are stored in a separate file so and if you didn't have something like OneDrive, which we didn't used to have obviously they then didn't link up on the next computer and then you'd have to go through and link all the files up if the other person was working on it and it would get quite it could get quite messy um but now they load it on OneDrive and they can share it and they can all access that file. So it's actually like the, the whole process of working together online is just getting easier and easier. So with that process, with online becoming more of a norm, in, in your course, do you cover aspects like working together online? Like how do you communicate? Because I, I can imagine not every group is going to be an idyllic process. There, there's going to be, you know, tensions, <laughs> disagreements, arguments, someone not pulling their weight. So in, yeah. in terms, and that, but that's a brilliant experience yes, to go is. through because that sets you up for, for life. But, and then the real, the real world. <laughs> but how, how do you 
It's quite interesting, actually, because they, they write an evaluation at the end of the unit and they, ha they have to evaluate themselves and their team members. And the honesty you see is unbelievable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you expect that they wouldn't be. But quite often people who feel like they've not maybe pulled their weight will be very honest in their evaluation and say, like, you know, where they think they could have improved for future. So, so it does seem quite a good process. Evaluation happens at the end of a project, yeah. but often if you if you're talking about a project that stretches over four weeks, the the difficulty for me as a teacher sometimes, especially when I had kind of distance or out of class based group work, is that it's all invisible to me. You know, I don't see what's going on. How do you manage that process? And so how do you ensure that teams work together? We get them to upload as they're going through each part. So they, for instance, they all had to come up. They all had to research their own idea and then they all also had to sketch out and storyboard their idea and then they all come together and have a meeting and then I'm at, I was at the meetings some of the meetings as well so I had to, basically throughout the process not only was I in meetings with them checking up and seeing them giving them advice uh, but I was also I was also getting them to upload the work that like they've done as they're going so I knew who had done what and what you know where who was responsible if that makes sense uh, absolutely. Um, I, I noticed, Walter, you, you put in a, a question into the chat um, for Alan. You can ask it yourself if you like. Yeah, it was just hearing you talking about that, Alan, struck me that, you know, there is an, there is an international competition for digital media production. And, uh, you know, had you, uh, you were talking about giving teams a bigger challenge beyond just a, a four week thing. Um, and certainly these international competitions do offer that opportunity and also to share experiences with other colleges in Scotland and, and, and the UK. Yeah, so no, I can, I can, yeah, I can send you some information if you're interested. Yeah, that would be brilliant. Yeah. That would be brilliant. Okay, I'll do that. Thank so I, I, absolutely, Think, things like world skills, it gives that kind of authentic experience of working in real competition and, and, and a taste of what their likely futures might be. Um, in terms of the college now, looking to see what you've produced, are they looking for, for more from you? What, what's your plans for the future? Well, myself uh, and my colleague, uh, Terry Cook, we've been speaking um, with our manager about maybe what we'll do this year for, the, for, their, for their group project. So yeah, there's plans in place and obviously what are the key things at the moment? So I've like, like obviously we're talking about sustainability and things like that. That that seems to be probably one of the key 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 agendas, especially when you see the like what young people are, you know, and all that the amount of activist work that's going on at the moment around sustainability and stuff. So we we're we that's something we're thinking about at the moment anyway for this year. So we're also we've also uh, in the past had um, you know like uh, employers in Aberdeen um, who work in the you know in the three D and advertising and oil industry all of these companies also like to get involved so like we've had a had a lot of work with uh we've worked like quite a lot with uh, abc and media in aberdeen in the past so it's also good to get them involved and they've often got, got us to do like in the past uh, green energy green energy uh sort of um so sort of wind and advertisements around that so we also do try and get our students when they're doing the group project uh involved with with companies as well and so and past students work at that company and give the brief to the current students, which is quite cool as well. So what do you see for the future? If you, what, what do you want to bring? I, I think the, the fact that we see that students produce such useful work that can be used within the college, you know, what's, what's your vision for the future? Yeah. And what, what advice would you give to others who want to bring their own students to have this kind of effect? Well, I, I think for me, it's, 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 it's always looking at what the next big thing is and i've spoken to you kenji about it before but i want to introduce introduce like new units to to what we teach things like sculpting uh 3d sculpting um which you know i mean is quite quite a big thing now and you know i mean it's used in industry and it's not included currently so i'd love to get some 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 more units uh that are you know some new units uh written for that so that's like a plan for the future and when it comes to the course, obviously, like I've discussed it and I don't know if it would, it's possible. And there's probably lots of issues around it, but I've always, uh, I've, I've spoken to managers in the past about it as well. And my boss was really keen 
uh, Tony, and he would basically, though, it'd be nice to have some sort of company within the college that, that maybe could provide 3D and sound and all the things that we do. I wonder if we could like actually have a small company, like a creative company within the college that some of the students could then follow on and do work for straight after college. Because a lot of our students, like most of our students do go on to university, but there's quite a lot of them that want to get in like straight into the industry. And we do obviously have some each year who go straight into industry, but a nice stepping stone opportunity. And if you get, and if we could get some local companies who are willing to like give people a chance, um, I think that would be really positive for Aberdeen because we're, we are quite a, although we have huge companies, we're quite a small place and you know what I mean? So it would be brilliant to get involvement, with, more involvement with companies um, through us having our own little, you know, enterprise or something like that. We, we have seen that in the college sector before, colleges setting up um, yes. industry within the college for their students to experience. Um, so we do have a few minutes left. Does anyone have any questions for, for Alan? Just to say that, that, that's a great idea. I remember Fourth Valley did that at one time for their software development course, Alan. They created a small company and students came in and worked in it and they got outside contracts. But I don't, I don't think they were able to sustain the effort. That's what worries yeah. me. With, yeah, that's what I think you need, like, good, you need good connections. And you also, for instance, the companies like ABC and Media who, who, who work with our, our students in the past, you don't want to, like, upset them. Because obviously they're, you know, you don't want to take work away from companies that are doing well within the area either. So, you know, I mean, it's kind of, it has to be, a, you know, everybody needs to sort of uh, work together so that it's a, a, like you say, it's a thing. And I, I think like you say that that's a, it's a difficult thing probably to maintain. Well, but very worthwhile doing if you can manage it. It would be. So don't, would be. don't give up on the idea. <laughs> well, that's it. Cause if like people like Aberdeen council, you know what I mean? Like even like, you know, things within the, you know, the public sector, we could, we could help NHS, you could do videos for NHS, you could do video, you know, I mean, even if it's just in more sort of like, you know, internal social stuff, that would still be an amazing experience for students, wouldn't it? So we we have heard from um, colleges Ayrshire uh, and other areas in creative arts and industries. So I know I, I don't have the Ayrshire link, that's so bad of me, um, but I do have the um, Glasgow Kelvin. So they've set up their own record labels and companies for their creative students to work through um, producing bands and work. So there's a lot of examples there in, in the creative side where, where this has been sustained over many years. So the opportunity is definitely there, but I, but I understand there's the, the tension of, you know, businesses. In the area. Yeah. You don't want to step on toes. You <laughs> toes, want to, you, uh -huh. yeah, we're trying to get these students into those jobs, not, yeah, <laughs> not, not take them away. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there's definitely going to be opportunity there. And yeah. I and I think working, especially in this area of uh, mental health charities areas, you know, a lot of people need assistance. I think the only difficulty that John and some of the others have told me about at Ayrshire is this expectation that because you're a a, a student, um, that you'll work for essentially for free <laughs> or for exactly. buttons, yes. and 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 that's a tension. Um, the fact that if you produce really good stuff, people go look at it and go, "Wow, you know, oh, but you're a student. You could could you just just knock off a few of those for me?" Yeah, that's it. It was it was <laughs> the, the same. When, it was the same when I left university and uh, college. They, you know, they when you're trying to get that first job, you, you, a lot of a lot of companies don't expect to pay, especially in what we do. You know, what I mean, like uh, I take the students down to what well, I did before COVID. Anyway, take the students down to London, and we used to visit ILM who do like do Star Wars, and we used to go to the Mill who did the special effects on Gladiators, and you know, lots, lots of like cool places, um, and, and and some other places. Cinesite, I think, was one we were planning to go to. Um, so yeah, we've been to. We, we used to take them yearly down, and they'd visit studios, and uh, and they'd uh, you know they'd get to see some of the advanced sort of software and uh, and engineering department as well uh, so we saw some really interesting uh work and the students always came back saying that they were inspired to, to do that because of being in Aberdeen it's a big it feels like a big leap to them like applying for a job down in London you know what I mean but once we've been down there and we we'd, we'd get people who work there to talk to our students um it made a huge difference to them so 
yeah, the, the studio uh, visit made a huge difference. And again, it's all about trying to get that connection between us and, you know, the career that they might look forward to, to being in. Okay, Alan, so um, that, that kind of brings us to the end of our time for our, our recorded part of this session. Um, I really appreciate you um, no sharing your story and your experiences with us and I look forward really to seeing the launch of you know Nesco's own ILM <laughs> maybe we'll invite you back to see yeah, some of that production just a work. small step <laughs> <laughs> okay so for everyone joining us in YouTube land um thanks for joining us for this and hopefully you'll be able to join us at some future uh, virtual bridge session but until then as always stay safe